We're working with the LED flat panel. First, we'll open the junction box. Okay, on the one side in the LED uh, light fixture, we have the leads that go to the LED driver, and we have the leads that go to the LED fixture itself. On the second compartment, we have the line voltage side. That's where you're gonna bring your power supply into. Okay, we're gonna pull the purple and gray lead out, just tape it to the side. Uh, we are gonna be using an SJ cord to simulate our power supply. In the field, you'd be using your typical wiring methods, MC cable, Romex, depending upon your application. The next step is to go ahead and pick up your emergency ballast. Making sure you identify both ends. You have the one end, which is gonna be wired into the line voltage compartment, and one for the low voltage. So we will be starting with the low voltage. So you'll see that it's identified with the tags that say LED driver. You'll need to remove the knockout on the side of the junction box. So next step, we'll go ahead and pick up the lead from the emergency ballast and put it onto the low voltage side. Being careful not to scrape the wires on the edge or damage the tags. The connector is a snap-in type. So once you approach your knockout, let's push it in, assert it. There you go, you're locked in. So now we're ready to wire. Remove the knockout on the line voltage compartment. Now grab the whip on the emergency ballast and go ahead and place it into the knockout. Starting with the class two compartment, we're gonna go ahead and separate the leads. So removing the wire nuts, we're gonna go ahead and cut the ends off and then we're going to restrip the wires. Now that we've separated them, we can easily see the two leads that go to the driver, the black and red, and we have two leads that go directly to the LED array. We'll start with the LED driver leads, the black and red. We're going to now pair it up with the tags that came with the, uh, the ballast, the backup ballast. So you'll notice that the tags are identified as LED driver. You have a positive and a negative marking or identification on there. Your red will be going to the positive and black will be going to your negative. We're gonna connect the positive lead first. Now we do the negative lead. Now we're going to do the leads that go to the LED array. So we're gonna restrip them. Okay, we're going to identify the leads that came with the whip and they read LED. Okay, so we have the positive first. Now we do the negative lead. So we have those completed now. You'll notice there is two leads left over. They have a plug on them. We will wait to the very end because that will energize the battery in the ballast. Go ahead and tuck in the low voltage. I'm going to tuck those wires in, making sure the wire nuts stay intact. Moving over to the, the line voltage compartment, we're going to first start with the grounding. Okay, next would be taking the neutrals, the grounded conductor. So we have a total of three of them, one from the power source, one from the whip, and one from the driver. Now that we've completed the grounding and neutral connections, we're gonna go ahead and introduce the testing switch. So if you take a look, it has the light which indicates whether or not it's receiving power, and then the test and reset to make sure that it's maintaining its charge. This would normally go into a device box uh, located down away from the light fixture or cut into the ceiling uh, into an accessible location. But for demonstration purposes only, we're gonna wire it in here side by side with the light fixture. We're gonna go ahead and identify the test and reset switch, which is nothing more than a single pole switch, which needs constant power on one lead, and then the load on the other, which would be your LED array. So if we go ahead and grab the, the black lead coming from our power source, the SJ cord, along with the black lead that goes into the emergency ballast. That is a total of three conductors that are being connected together. The second lead on the test and reset uh, button switch, we're gonna go ahead and connect to the LED array. Okay, now that leaves us only with two conductors left, which are the ones that are fed through the pilot light. So as you can see, in the line voltage compartment, we only have the red and the gray wires to connect. So please match up the gray to gray and the red to red. An overview of what we've completed. 
we're going to point out on the reset switch, we have the power supply coming in. So you'll notice there's three conductors in there. We have the feed coming in. We have the power lead that goes to the um, emergency ballast, as well as the lead that goes to the actual switch. Then the second lead for the switch leg is wired directly to the LED array. Okay. Next, we have the indicator light. That's wired gray to gray, red to red. The emergency ballast comes with the dip switches set in the on position. What we need you to do is to only keep the number four dip switch in the on position. Number one, number two, and number three slide down to the off position. What that is doing is regulating the voltage to 40 volts. Now this emergency ballast needs to be supported according to National Electrical Code, just for safety. Now that we've completed the wiring, we have one last thing to do, which is to plug in the emergency ballast. Taking the two white leads, you have a male and female connection. You go ahead and plug that straight in. So now we're gonna go ahead and plug in the LED fixture. Showing the light on the face plate that it is in charge. If we were to test it immediately, you might have a res residual charge um, to see if the light is left on. This particular indicator light would be mounted in a device box or in a ceiling tile. 